<laughs> yes, I'm starting every one of these like that. Just deal with it, okay? Uh, okay, well, the PS2 game overview continues unabated. This time around, we're going to talk about... Ah! These ones. Today, on the Multimedia Chronicles. Welcome back. Okay, so, uh, moving right along here, this time around we're going to talk about games based on movies and TV shows. Now, again, I've played a lot more games based on movies and TV shows than I currently own, but, um, you know, whatever. This is what I've got now. So let's take a look. We'll start off with the ones that I haven't actually played yet. Yeah, I know, I'm terrible. Um, there's, of course, Constantine, based on the movie which was based on the comic book <laughs> so it's a game based on a movie based on a comic book um, one thing I always like to check out with these types of games is how much of the voice cast from the actual movie or show uh, is in the game in this case it doesn't seem to be any of them but whatever so anyway we've got Constantine here which is a good uh, looks like a third person actioner where you uh, Battle demons and the forces of hell and whatnot. Now we take a look. In, <coughs> take a look inside. This one was actually sent to me by Jad Zia, who's one of my longtime viewers and a very good friend. So just your basic instruction manual it gives you profiles of a bunch of the monsters and you know items and things like that. So I haven't actually played this yet. Uh, Jad Zia tells me it's actually quite a good game, so I look forward to that. And moving right along, we have of course the very first game made based on the Matrix trilogy. Now this originally came out uh, around the same time that the second movie came out and the interesting thing about this is it heavily involves people from the movie. Um, all the um, full motion video sequences and cinematics in this were written and directed by the Wachowski brothers themselves. Actually I think the whole game script was written and directed by the Wachowski brothers and it actually fits into the continuity of the movie. It actually, uh, the game is actually a side story which runs parallel to uh, events from the second movie. So technically speaking, this is like The Matrix 2.5. Uh, <laughs> and it tells the story of, of uh, Naomi and her crew and how they're trying to recover the uh, message left by... Um, Oh God, it's been so long since I've watched it. Anyway, if you've seen the Animatrix, the one, the uh, the last flight of the Osiris, the whole mission there where they were trying to leave a message in the Matrix that the machines were coming, uh, tunneling towards Zion. Well, this is the story of the retrieval of that message. So it's a pretty important side story. And um, both of these uh, stories are referred to in the movie. So it's pretty cool what they did, actually, even if you don't, particularly care for it. You can't deny the fact that they did uh, some pretty ambitious things. I mean, they had comic books that tied into it. They had the Animatrix, of course, uh, which is nine short films, and the uh, four of which actually fit into the continuity of the movies. And then they have this game, which is fully a part of the continuity of the movies, and, um, and features a lot of the cast. You actually have... Uh, uh, you got Mary Alice as the Oracle. You've got... Uh, Sorry, it's all in alphabetical order here. You've got, um, oh, what's her face? you got Lawrence Fishburne as Morpheus, of course. You've got um, Randall Duck Kim as the key maker, right out of the movie. You have uh, Jada Pinkett Smith as um, Naomi, of course. you got Carrie Ann Moss as Trinity. I think... Uh, You got the twins in here. You got Keanu Reeves as Neo. Basically, everybody. The short, long and short of it is, everybody from the movie is in this game at some point, even if it's just a cameo. But uh, it's pretty cool in that you you actually get to interact with characters and the story of the movie and play firsthand a, a pretty important chapter of the Matrix Reloaded story. Now that said, I have not actually played the game yet. I have seen it played. Um, 
because my uh, my so, some friends of the family actually had it a while ago, and I watched them play it a little bit on the uh, on their PS2. And I always meant to pick it up, and I finally did manage to find it. And I think I got it for like three dollars, and it's I mean it's in beautiful condition. I mean this is like in brand new condition. It has that nice shiny cover. So anyway, Enter the Matrix. There is another Matrix game, of course, The Path of Neo, in which you actually get to play Neo and go through his uh, whole story. Um, I do not have that one yet, but I will. Next up, of course, we have Wolverine's Revenge, which uh, I think I got for five dollars. You may recall some of these from updates a number, number many moons ago. Uh, Wolverine's Revenge was actually a, a game that was a spin-off of the second X-Men movie, so pretty cool. And it wasn't until Wolverine Origins that we got another Wolverine-centric game. Um, I have played Wolverine Origins quite a bit, but I have not played this one. Uh, in this one, the voice of Wolverine is actually done by Mark Hamill of Star Wars and Batman the Animated Series fame. He's made quite a name for himself doing voiceover work, i got to say. Uh, so, you know, go Mark! <laughs> So who all, actually let me just quickly check the cast list here. Who all is in this? I know we got Mark Hamill as the Joker. Oh yeah, and you have Patrick Stewart as Professor X. And uh, a bunch of other actors whose names I don't recognize. Oh, and Mayim Bialik. Yes, Blossom. Blossom is in this as a bush pilot. Uh, and as May Deuce. So, there you go. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. I've heard that this is actually a pretty decent game. Uh, not, nowhere near as violent as the, um, the current one, of course, but, uh, but still quite a solid game. you got Lady Deathstrike there, and where was it? You have Sabretooth, and of course Wolverine. So, Wolverine's Revenge. So, those are ones, all three of those are ones I really look forward to playing. It's just a matter of finding time. I mean, that's the thing, when you get a lot of games all at once, it's a matter of finding time to, to play them. Okay, now, two that I actually have played. Speaking of Mark Hamill, we have Batman, whoops, we have Batman Vengeance, which is a really cool game based uh, entirely on the 90s Batman animated series. And speaking of voice cast reprising their roles, almost every single character in this has the original actor or actress from the show reprising the role of the character. So you got Kevin Conroy as Batman, you got Mark Hamill as the Joker, you got Michael Ansara as Mr. Freeze, you got Diane Pershing as Poison Ivy, you've got um, Arlene Sorkin as Harley Quinn, you got Bob Hastings as uh, Commissioner Gordon, Ephraim Zimbalist Jr. as Alfred, and the list just goes on and on and on. I mean, basically, if you are a fan of the Batman animated series, you really owe it to yourself to check this out. Now, you may have seen some reviews on YouTube uh, of this that were less than favorable. Like, for example, Armic21, who's an awesome game reviewer who I really have enjoyed for years, um, did an in-depth review on this a while ago and a bit of a playthrough uh, where he was playing the, the PC version. And his primary complaint with the PC version was that um, the controls, they, they just completely messed up the controls. I mean, they were just flat out broken controls. And he couldn't execute even the most basic moves because of the horrible controls. Now, the console version, however, and he even says this in his review, the console version does not suffer from those problems. And, you know, the controls, while not flawless, um, are perfectly functional and you'll be able to to work your way through the game no problem. Now the really cool thing about this is it's all done in 3, 3D obviously. It's a third person actioner. A uh, bit of a free roaming aspect to it. Um, I found when I was playing this I was really heavily into uh, Grand Theft Auto Vice City and uh, when I was playing this I was thinking wow how cool would it be just to have a free roaming Gotham and a free roaming Batman game a la Vice City. So like you know GTA Gotham. <laughs> but uh, you know, so far this is about as close as we've we've come to that. Um, as far as like, I would love to see a game based on Batman the Animated Series, and this is all done in that style as well. But I'd love to see a game like this, but done in free roaming style. Anyway, I think this this one gets kind of a bad rap, and I think that's unfortunate. It's not the greatest Batman game ever, but if you're a fan of the animated series, it's definitely worth picking up because I mean, it's got a good chunk of the voice cast and a completely original story that kind of acts as an extended, um, uh, like almost a series of, of missing episodes. You know, it has like each, each chapter of the game has like the, uh, the really nice 
art card titles like you get in the show. And, uh, and it really has the feel of playing the animated series uh, interactively. It's just, it's fabulous. Um, I really definitely recommend Batman Vengeance, and it's, it's a lot of fun. And then finally, we have one of many games based on the Terminator franchise, Terminator Dawn of Fate. Now, this particular game takes place um, entirely in the future Los Angeles, I guess it is. Yeah, Los Angeles, 2027 AD. So it's... Uh, you know, the Rebels versus the Machines and such, which you think, and it's got this cool, shiny cover. I don't know how well you can, well, you're just getting glare from the plastic. But anyway, it's got this kind of cool, metallic, shiny cover. Now, this game also gets a lot of flack, and um, let me try to explain why. I have played this through to completion. Now, positives, this has a great story. Like, it has a really good story that I think, um, you know, sort of fits in nicely with the existing Terminator mythos. And, uh, ooh, full-color manual. It's been a while since I cracked this open. But um, it's always a treat when you see a manual is in full color. <laughs> it's, it just doesn't seem, it seems most of them are black and white. So it's like, oh, wow, pretty. Um, anyway, so the story's really great, and the graphics are pretty nice, too. I mean, they really captured the look and feel of uh, post-apocalyptic Los Angeles quite nicely. Uh, you know, and you got some good characters. You got Kyle Reese in it as one of the main characters. Uh, part of the mission is actually sending, or part of it is, is trying to get Reese into the future. So that's pretty cool. And you got these other characters who are basically just uh, exist solely for the game. So, and you've got John, John Connor in there and uh, all kinds of stuff. And then a bunch of other characters that you wouldn't know. Who all, uh, anybody notable in the voice cast here? Does it even say? Eh, voice cast, voice cast. Da, 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 da. I hate it when they don't actually tell you the voice cast. It's like, this is the information that I want to know. Oh, here we go. We got Bruce Dubose as John Connor, David Wilk as Alexander Stone, da, 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 and a bunch of people. That, you know, yeah, don't know who any of those people are. But anyway, the biggest problem that a lot of people have with this is the fact that it's a third person action game uh, with a static camera, which means you you don't actually control the camera. Um, and the biggest problem I had, like, for example, the best example I can think of, there's a, there's a level where you're fighting through a parking garage, and you're kind of, uh, I forget if you're going up, like, up a ramp or down a ramp, I can't remember. You're going on a ramp, anyway, you're fighting on a ramp, and there's endoskeletons coming at you. And here's the problem. The point where you meet up with the endoskeletons and have to fight them Almost every single time, there would be a pillar right in the middle of the action. So you'd be fighting an endoskeleton from behind a pillar, just kind of madly mashing the buttons, hoping you're doing some damage. And yeah, it was just really badly timed and really, you know, there was definitely a lack of quality control on the camera. Now, here's the kicker. Here's the kicker. One of the things you can unlock in this is a first-person mode. So you can actually play through the whole game in first-person. And as a first-person game, uh, all those sections that were marred by the crappy camera are actually a lot easier and actually playable. Oh my god. So my big question is, why the hell didn't they just make that a feature to begin with? Or just make it a first-person game to begin with, you know? Or give you the option to switch back and forth uh, from the beginning. Why does it have to be an unlockable feature? So, so you got to play through the whole game with the crappy camera controls or lack of camera controls uh, and deal with that before you can get first person mode. So yeah, so it's definitely a mixed bag. Uh, you know, controls were fine. I mean, I didn't have any problem with the, the actual game controls. It was mainly the camera. The camera just messes you up so many times and makes it really difficult to get through certain sections. But, um, you know, as I say, it's a very good-looking game. It's got a good story. And, you know, at the very least, if you find it cheap, check it out. And if you're a Terminator fan or a completist for Terminator games, check it out. Um, I don't think it's as bad as everybody says it is, but it definitely could have been better. And that does it. That's the current collection of games based on movies and TV shows. And based on movies based on comic books that are based on TV shows and yeah, anyway, right on down the line. <laughs> so next time, hmm, still a few more sections to go. Not sure which one we're going to cover next time, so it'll be a surprise to you as well as me. Until then, thanks for watching, and sayonara.